the last video, we learned how to use a flowchart to solve a working backwards problem. Today, we will explore working backwards further by looking at another example. So here's the situation. Last week, Tina went apple picking and picked a lot of apples. On the first day, she ate three of them. On the second day, half of the remaining apples mysteriously disappeared. Next, on the third day, she ate another three apples. So she must really like apples. And finally, on the fourth day, she gave half of the remaining apples to her good friend Sandy. After all of this, she still had 12 apples left. Tina wants to know how many apples did she have originally. Because we know how many apples remained after four days, and we need to know how many apples there were to begin with, we need to work backwards. When working backwards, we must go back through the question, step by step, use a flow chart to represent the situation visually, and solve the problem using the information given. Let's begin with the flow chart. On this flow chart, we will be using boxes to represent how many apples Tina had on each day, and we'll be using arrows to represent the changes between those days and the number of apples that Tina had. Now let's go through the question. According to the question, on the first day, Tina ate three apples. We can put that information right here because this arrow indicates a change between the number of apples between day one and day two. So Tina ate three apples. Now we can go to day two. On day two, according to the question, half of the remaining apples mysteriously disappeared. We can put that here since this arrow, similarly to this arrow, indicates a change between the number of apples between day two and day three. So you can write half of the apples disappeared. Now let's go on to day three. On day three, Tina ate another three apples. Putting the information right here will show that there's a change between day three and day four. On day four, she gave half of the remaining apples to her good friend Sandy. Half to her friend Sandy. Which will bring us to the very last box, which will show us how many apples Tina had at the end. Which is actually given in the question. The question tells us that after that, she still had 12 apples left. So we're actually given the information that goes in this box. But we're not given the information for the rest of the boxes. So now we must work backwards in order to solve the question, which is, how many apples did Tina have originally? So we are given 12 apples. And what happens right before 12 apples? Half of the apples were given to Sandy. So there must be 24 apples before she gives any apples to Sandy. Because if you have 24 apples and you give half away to Sandy, half of 24 is 12, so you give away 12 apples, which leaves you with 12. So that seems right. Let's go up to the next step. So after she eats, after Tina eats three apples, she's left with 24 apples, which means she must have had 27 apples before she ate three of them. Now let's go up to the next step. So another, t another one where half of the apples are gone. Half the apples are taken away. So we can just multiply by two once again. Tina now has 54 apples. So if we look at it, Tina has 54 apples. Half of them mysteriously disappear. So half of 54 is 27. So she'll have 27 apples left. Now let's go to the very last one. Tina ate three apples. After she ate those three apples, there were 54 left, which means there must be 57 apples before she ate the three. You can see 57 eats three, 54. 54, half disappears, 27. 27, she eats another three, there'll be 24 left. And 24, half she gives to Sandy, she only has 12 left. This, this flow, this flow chart really seems to work. So the answer to this question is 57 apples. And that's your answer.
Let's recap. First, draw a flow chart using boxes to represent stages and arrows to represent changes. Next, start from the end and work backwards to solve.